Thrones of Britannia is a total war game set on the British Isles in the height of the Viking Age, where you'll take control of a historic kingdom and guide them on their rise to power. But one culture you'll play as remembers a time when they were the only power on the island. Since the Greeks first recorded the British Isles into history, they were dominated by one people, the Britons. And as the Romans withdrew from the Saxon advance into Britain in the 5th century AD, they left behind a unique culture that combined the power of Rome with the native warrior traditions. Known today as the Welsh, the name ironically comes from the Anglo-Saxon word for foreigner, Wales. And as the Saxon tide pushed them back to the corners of Britain, the Welsh pushed back. From these Britonic kingdoms rose the legends of King Arthur, Dux Bellorum, Lord of Battles, who stopped the Saxon advance and drew a line across Britain they dared not cross. In game, the Welsh still hold to his example. Heroism is the cornerstone of the culture, a resource earned by winning battles and taking back Welsh lands. With it, you'll gain the respect of your people and bonuses to your generals. The Cumbrian Mountains provide a stalwart defense against approaching enemies, and as masters of this terrain, all of your armies will fight with increased morale on Welsh soil. Your armies will also gain additional supplies so long as you remain in your controlled territory. Both of the playable Welsh kingdoms, Strathcluth in the north and Gwynedd in the south, are kingdoms on the defense and positioned to take advantage of the new fame victory condition. The Total War series has always encouraged rapid expansion and map painting, but in Thrones, players will be given a new option to build tall instead of wide. Fame victories are earned by developing your faction through research, construction, and strong leadership. The Welsh faction trait of heroism ties into this by giving bonuses to influence and fame. Both Welsh faction capitals also have the unique Bardic building chain, a gathering place for the tellers of tales to help spread your fame. The people of Gwynedd in the south are no strangers to heroes. Their last king, Rodri the Great, managed to keep out the Vikings and annex nearly all of Wales. But on his death, all his work was undone. The Welsh laws of succession required that the land be split equally between his three sons. You will start as his oldest, King Aranith, the heir to the throne of Gwynedd. Your brothers hold the neighboring kingdoms, but with the Vikings moving again, it's only a matter of time before they cast your eyes to your borders. Your brothers may stand with you, as they are family, but his goal is to complete his father's dream and unify all the Britonic peoples under one banner and the creation of a kingdom of Wales. So will you be willing to bet his dreams of a kingdom of Wales on their jealousy? After all, they are family. And it was family that brought Arthur's downfall. And like the Nats of the Round Table, the men of Gwynedd are ready for a fight. They are famous horsemen descended from the Roman cavalry, and their generals are able to recruit larger and more powerful bodyguards than any other faction. But beyond the most powerful cavalry of Britain, the Welsh also draw upon ambush tactics and bring to bear the famous Welsh longbow. But they're not the only Welsh kingdom fighting for their survival. In the south of Scotland, you'll play as the last kingdom of the Old North, Strathcluth. Driven out of their ancestral fortress of Althcluth by the Vikings, their last king likely died a Viking prisoner in Ireland. You'll begin the game as his son, Rune, and your first and only job will be to ensure the survival of your people. And with Saxons, Vikings, Gales, and Picts on your borders, this will be no small feat. Rune begins the game married to the daughter of the King of the Picts, so you'll have a tenuous alliance in the north. But as you expand further inland to the safety of the River Clyde Valley, you'll be forced to pitch your own ambitions against those of your father-in-law. As you expand your map control, the unique faction trait of Strathcluse will take effect. A strong people are a united one. So as you resettle your people and expand your borders, you'll earn bonuses for every settlement you have adjacent to each other. And if you manage it, you'll be able to form the kingdom of Strathclyde. Both Welsh factions offer something markedly different than what we've seen in Thrones. Not focusing on expansion, but perseverance. The idea of winning with an empire that's not wide but tall is one that many, including myself, have asked for. But I wonder if you're as excited about it as I am. Or will the fame victory be relegated back to the likes of Crusader Kings and Civilization? As the last descendants of the Romans on the island of Britain, will you lead the Welsh kingdoms once more to return civilization to the throne of Britannia? Or will you put it beneath the boot of a dirty invader? Thrones of Britannia is available for pre-order now, and you can find a link to it on a Sega-approved site below for a hefty discount. And if you like the content here today, leave a comment below and join the conversation. I try to update weekly with videos and historical stories and games. Thanks for watching.